And with that, it is 2.03 and we'll start our webinar today. Thank you so much for attending. My name is Lucas Schaefer and I'm the Mending Program Coordinator at the Kortha Sexual Assault Center here in Peterborough, Nagoshinawa. I am so happy and excited for this webinar today. We have an amazing facilitator here that I'm very, very happy to be co-facilitating with and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Sanjana. Uh, currently I'm a placement student at KSAC and also I'm doing uh, my mental health and addiction worker program at Fleming. Welcome everyone. Welcome. So uh, the, the format of today's webinar is mostly going to be lots and lots of information with a question and answer period at the end. So um, you can totally post uh, your questions in the chat as we're going through the information. If something comes to your mind, let us know as soon as possible, but we're going to be uh, addressing those and discussing them at the end of the presentation. And with that, Sanjana, take it away. Yeah. So as you know, everyone, uh, today is shame and gender-based violence. So there are many stigma, discrimination, and everything we are going to discuss, how we can combat it, and every, every, everything. So let's start. So I, I uh, tell Lucas to put uh, into the chat our KSAC um, phone numbers and all. If you need support, if you are feeling something else, you need your own personal space. So we have a Me Too healing space, so you can go for it too. Awesome. Thank you, Sanjana. And, and that's going to be really important in this discussion because we're talking about gender-based and sexual violence, right? So mm -hmm. if at any point throughout this uh, like webinar, you're feeling activated or just need some time, you can access those 24-7 crisis supports uh, in the chat. So Kavata Sexual Assault Center, we work for supporting people who are like impacted by sexual and gender-based violence individual and group counseling for youth, adult survivors and their supporters, advocacy and accompaniment, public education for youth and adult schools and community spaces. We offer a crisis line, phone line and a web chat which is put in into our chat. So the overview of this webinar is like, what is shame, how the gender-based violence and shame are linked, where does shame come from, impact of shame and gender-based violence, confusion between shame and guilt, overcoming the feeling of shame and conclusion. So to start it, what is shame? So when people feel shame, uh, they believe that they're ultimately inadequate emotion or unworthy in the person. For many people, shame is an emotion to feel varying degree almost every day. It's a self-conscious emotion that shame informs us like internal state of inadequacy, unworthiness, dishonor, regret, or disconnection. Shame is a clear signal that our positive feelings are being interrupted. We feel a lot of negative space when we get shame, especially when you are like, you have to be face-to-face -face interaction between some people, or when you are seeking like, some kind of unworthiness in yourself, then you feel the shame. What are the symptoms of shame? Uh, wanting to disappear, anger, self-blame, and addiction. So firstly, uh, wanting to disappear is like most often people uh, feel shame when they cause bury their head and they want to just disappear from everything anything which is like pull out of the connection with other people, with other person. If you're feeling to avoid, uh, for example, if you're feeling avoidance with everyone, it can be anything. It can be related to the phone call, backing out of date, feeling, calling sick to the job. It uh, can be one of the symptoms of feeling shame. Another symptom is anger. The most common way of reacting to vent out your shame is, uh, is having anger upon other people as well as having anger upon yourself too. It is easy to blame someone than to rather just think like you have been uh, being done something wrong and anger helps to mitigate your feelings for the shame. For example, when parents yell at you, uh, we can run into our bedroom and just slam the door. That's what 
uh, anger is and anger is a really at some point covering your own shame and the third one is the self blame shame can cause people to heap their blame into themselves for example when teacher corrects you or gives you the criticism you respond by thinking i am i am such like i don't know anything i can't do anything why did i just take the class i should quit every other consequences of being very very un under confident about it and lastly the addiction is like when you are feeling some sort of shame you may use addiction as a some sort of your like your coping feelings maybe you are on alcohol drugs food or sex can be give to temporary relief from shame but it's all from our negative space the next one is like toxic shame mostly this term is very very negative and uh, also it can be developed in adulthood it's it's a kind of trauma which you can carry from like childhood experiences to your adulthood that mistakes which you continuously make you haunt each and every time it makes you happen it can be have an unstable feeling which you take some sort of repetitive action that can make outcome even more likely it can have an uh, effect from childhood which for example maybe abuse neglect or emotionally distancing from each and every one can have an inadequate or unworthy love or inadequate uh, response to yourself and also you can feel vulnerable at times for this too it's very very important to address your toxic shame what is gender based violence in our society's history women uh, and the members of lgbtq was disproportionately experienced sexual based violence upon your gender in canada one in two trans one in three women and one in six men will experience sexual violence it can be one of your two trans friends one of them can experience or will have experience gender based violence one uh, in uh, in your female friends when you have like three or more friends one of them may sort of experience gender based violence and one in six men too every kind of harm it perpetuated against the person's will based on socially ascribed gender differences between men and women and non binary folk this is how we define gender based violence it occurs both at the interpersonal as well as the systemic level gender based violence can offer be perpetuated or condoned by the state then we are learning how where does shame come from cultural norms self esteem issues religious conditioning trauma and abuse and gaslighting we will be going into details regarding all of this so the first one is cultural norms many cultures they stigmatize certain sexual interaction persons such as homosexual or sex between unmarried people person a uh, people who transgress this cultural norm may feel shame in a collective list culture some people may experience shame when loved up loved ones violate their cultural or moral norms it can happen um, for example uh, it can happen in uh, some of the asian countries where they don't accept homosexual sex or sex between unmarried people it is still a cultural norm still we have come out of the law and legal everything but it sort of imbibed into your culture this next one is the self esteem issues people with low self esteem may feel the struggle of feeling shame even there can be like, like there can be a point of no specific source of shame you can feel under confident you just have no motivation to do it can be one sort of shame the third one is religious conditioning many religious urge people to feel shame for violating the religious prescription uh it can be uh, some sort of like religion when you are going out of their boundaries you are crossing the border uh, of their shame they can feel uh, they can make you feel ashamed regarding it and some may use the shame to inspire 
uh, other people to do better. The next one is trauma and abuse. The people who experience trauma and abuse often experience shame from other people. In our society, still, we have a lot of stigma and discrimination when people go through gender-based violence and they experience a lot of shame from other people. Especially uh, when we take up a case of child sexual abuse, it's a common cause of shame in childhood when they feel embarrassed regarding their abuse experiences. Some of the abusive families or shame members who set their clear boundary, who can call what it is. The lastly, gaslighting. Attempting to convince someone that their perceptions are wrong can lead to shame, undermining uh, the own perceptions in all in your head, undermining your own uh, identity, dismissing the perception. So gender-based violence and shame. Shame is always termed in a negative way. Unresolved shame can lead into feelings of depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem. Shame has always related to uh, uh, mental health. It can have your impact uh, uh, maybe in your childhood as well as in your adulthood, and in, it can impact you more further. Shame can be also a uh, symptoms of some uh, mental health diagnosis such as body dysmorphia, or the product of traumatic experience such as rape or sexual assault. You can have post-traumatic stress disorder regarding shame to address each of it like it's really important. Humiliation and shame are always termed together. Uh, sometimes it does happen uh, we humil uh, humiliate the person and also make them feel ashamed of what they have did. It, uh, that's why it's always termed together. It may result in escalation to the spiral of shame and can range into more violence. This has an another effect when you understand shame, how shame is range effect, it may trigger violence uh, and critical to reducing the level of shame. Sometimes shame looks like when you're outbursting on the person, it may look like you're removing your anger. Frustration can be a, one of the potential cause of the violence for other people too. So the impact of shame and gender-based violence. Uh, shame can be one of the scarier emotion, but you can overcome it. Living with shame, regardless of the shame sources, can be lonely and demoralizing experience. When shame is past misdeed, uh, the, a right therapist can support you to make amendments regarding it and to ever feel like you are not alone in this world. There are people out to help you. You may have living, uh, being living in guilt, being afraid of being exposed. It can cause behavioral changes in your daily life. Feeling of fear in, in the shame is one of the biggest impact which has an individual uh, and on other people too. Being judgmental about yourself, being unworthy, thinking about you are not made for this uh, is having some so, sort of uh, impact on yourself feeling of I am I am so unworthy I don't have any power upon yourself and shame also triggers to violence much violence which is like causing emotional violence and ob and abuse triggered the shame as, as we talked in the next ones so we are going to watch a video like tells us how shame motivates act of violence uh Lucas can you just put up the video Absolutely. Let me just do that. We all want to be members of a group. We want to feel secure in a group. And we all want to move into groups of higher status. And shame is what we experience when we feel that our membership in a group is in jeopardy. 
or when we try to enter a group of higher status and we're rejected. Also, it's the same we experience when we think those things are happening and they're not happening, you know? If we get a little paranoid, we think people are rejecting us, we feel shame that they're not really doing it. And also, when we uh, feel shame empathically, so we see someone being mistreated and we feel shame for them. Acts of violence that seem to have no obvious motivation are motivated by shame and I say this is my theory, but there are actually a couple of people, uh, James Gilligan, for one, who, who states this in his book on violence, his three books on violence. He says that uh, all violent acts are, motivi are motivated by shame. And um, well, I'll go a step further and say that violent acts are motivated by unmanaged shame. So the question is really how much shame the person has accumulated, whether it's a trait or a state. State shame is something that a, that a person, a normal person, if there is such a thing, would experience now and then. A person who has been shamed continuously and awfully for a long time will experience trait shame. It's like trait anger. It's like you say, whoa, that guy's angry all the time, you know? This is someone who's ashamed all the time. The best way to manage shame is to have a person you trust completely, a person you can open your heart to, who you can tell about what just happened. So I know when I'm in a, shame, a bad shaming experience, uh, what I feel a need to call up my wife and say, hey, listen to what just happened to me. And then I tell her about it and she makes sympathetic noises. And I feel better because I feel like she's giving me her attention, she's listening carefully, and she understands what I'm feeling. I think if you look at the school shooters and also domestic terrorists, you'll see people who are very alienated. They have very few friends, um, and the friends they have, they don't discuss uh, shaming issues, which are often very personal. Um, they often have very poor verbal skills. They have difficulty articulating things, and possibly they have difficulty naming their feelings. You know, that's one thing that shrinks who work with kids always talk about, you know, how does this make you feel? Um, so they can't manage the shame, so it tends to move toward um, managing it through a, a, what Donald Levinson calls an attack other mode. You want to get rid of your shame by attacking someone else. There are other necessities also for violent behavior. Often they'll have a model of someone who has behaved violently, and also they'll have a gun fetish, which is not uncommon in this country, where nearly everyone has a gun. So uh, as you got to know, the uh, the video does explain how shame motivates act of the violence, and you if you are wondering uh, how uh, like shame causes violence, maybe uh, like we can have a, a talk about it or something because it it all depends on how does shame motivates act of the violence when it does have a triggering point towards it and when uh, obviously when person feel awful when they have this like huge uh, i am being so powerful on other person it uh, it does happens on that yeah like maybe i could uh would i be able to add something sanjana i was really noticing in that video uh the parallels between trait and state shame yeah. and what you were speaking about earlier with shame and toxic shame, right? Where uh, feelings of shame that are kind of just like new or, or not regular can be emotions and experiences on their own. But when they're sustained and when they happen over and over and over again for long periods of time they and, and increase in severity, that's where we're starting to see this kind of trait shame, right? Oh, no, I, I think that was really fascinating, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. 
that's what he discussed and he all uh, he talked about the thing when he he's feeling shame or when he's feeling little bit low he goes to like his wife who gives his like motivation to it and all like just uh, like just uh, being listening to another person uh, does cause an huge impact on yourself it just how how you perceive or you uh, like usually uh, there are uh, so many people who are around you when you feel like sharing towards it mm -hmm. right and i think i feel like this, this is kind of dovetailing into our conversation that we're probably going to be having a little bit uh later yeah. where it really helps to have other people kind of like join you in the processing of these like feelings and emotions, right? Um, shame makes you feel like you have to isolate yourself and combat these emotions by yourself. But turns out the most difficult thing is what's best. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you're the main concept come re uh, confusion between the shame and guilt. Shame is often uh, often confused with guilt and emotion we might experience as a result of wrongdoing, um, which uh, which makes us feeling more vulnerable. Oops, I'm so sorry. Uh, which helps you to feel more vulnerable. We might feel remorseful or wish to make an amendment regarding it, where we are feeling uh, where we uh, have this confusion regarding the shame and the guilt. Many people does experiences it, and often guilt, uh, shame, uh, is an feeling, and guilt is an emotion. That's a difference between that. And often, when uh, like people talk uh, about the situation, it leaves us with the guilty feelings, and we much likely to broadcast it as uh, as our shame. Uh, uh like uh, if we are feeling guilty about it but uh, we are also feeling shameful about it but there uh, it's always a, a difference regarding it um like uh, it is like always said uh, like our bad behavior is not separate from the bad self as we living with a guilt so the next one is how to overcome the feelings of shame uh, by uh, bringing shame into light, untangling your own feelings, recognizing the triggers and the fears when you are dealing with shame and finding the strength. It's uh, uh, whenever, uh, when we are feeling shame, we always sort of feeling a, a sort of negative exposure or around us. And we, and, we th and we think a lot of negative things. And we always think about, uh, I am weak in this, I am weak in that, but uh, we need to find out our own strength and also the coping strategies to uh, uh, help you to feel that. Uh, like for example, I wasn't so much good at maths, uh, so for me that was not my uh, thing and I used to feel so shameful in the class, like I don't know maths, I, I feel like so much, uh, I was so so triggered when I was like, uh, I, I am feeling so much shameful to do this subject, but for me the strength was whenever I used to do my maths, um, I used to write down everything, the each and every step regarding it. That was my strength and it helped me to remember it so that I shouldn't be sh shameful in next time being in class. If the teacher asks me, what is the answer of this? I know how to cope about it. So it was one of my coping strategy to just write down because uh, I don't, uh, I read and I understand that's what my strength was at that time. And also one of the main thing uh, shame does uh, when you're combating with toxic shame, you may hide from other people or preferring isolation or, pre or, or preferring the interpersonal contact. But uh, it is one of the negative feeling. 
you should have like a talk with other people and also uh, recognize that feeling shame is really it's really okay and you should come out and talk with people and i think so everyone does understand what you are trying to feel maybe it uh, maybe it can be your loved one maybe it can be your friend maybe it can be your peer or maybe there are some professional people who try to understand counselor psychotherapist psychiatrist and all and one of the main uh, uh thing is psychotherapy can be helpful in underlying the the root cause of shame it can be also often a foundation a powerful foundation for like uh mental uh, it can be a powerful foundation where you need to uh, go upon like uh, that includes anxiety depression post traumatic stress disorder disorder and you you shouldn't go into the way of the coping strategies which can be like wrong such as addiction i talked uh, quite well before uh, and also uh, it can eliminate your vicious cycle where you again and again go into i am feeling shame then i am doing this you need to stop that vicious cycle when you do experience it so uh, in the conclusion i would like to say shame is one of the root cause of violence it it can be one of the triggering cause of the violence and understanding and recognizing shame is quite essential there is a difference between shame and guilt overcoming shame is really really important and i would like to tell of my participants you are not alone in the journey we are always with you uh, and it also paves towards finding strength and living li a life without fear and seeking out a support for shame can be really really helpful so i think that's it Excellent. thank you so much Thank you so much, Sanjana. And I think with that, we can start transitioning into our open discussion that we have with all of our uh, participants. We just went through a lot of information. Um, so if at any time uh, during this kind of like discussion portion, you wanna go back to a slide or, or refer back to something that was uh, spoken of in the, throughout the webinar, just let us know in the chat or in the Facebook live chat. Uh, we have one question from Jocelyn that I, I think is an excellent question. Could it be a power and control motivation regarding like uh, shame being linked to gender-based violence, feeling a lack of control for emotions and feelings of shame manifesting in acts of violence against others as a way to experience some type of control? What do you think, Sanjaya? That's a very, very strong question. And I really like that. Uh, so I would answer the first one. Could it be a power? Uh, could it be? Uh... Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> could it be a power or control motivation? Yes. Uh, I think so. Shame does trigger violence, uh, and shame is one of the uh, root cause of violence. It can be when you are being powerful for uh for example if we if we take uh from the point of view from like a feminist perspective if i'm bound to say that we can uh, uh, uh the men the patriarchal society can feel really powerful or motivation regarding it uh, and I think so, Lucas, you can answer the second question because I, I don't know, like feeling of lack of control or emotions. Yeah, totally. I think I think what this uh, question is really like trying to, to get at is uh, those that motivating like factor for why people do this violence, right? And uh, I think I'm very inclined to agree with Jocelyn's question and affirm that like, I do think that in some times, uh, in some cases of these acts of either uh, serial violence or or just like domestic terrorism that there is a feeling that um these people have been disenfranchised right we know that in canada the majority of uh like people who commit domestic violence are 
white cis men, right? Yeah. Very, a very uh, traditionally powered group who are perceiving some sort or some form of that power being taken away from them, right? Uh, and maybe they're interpreting that <laughs> as feeling shame for who they are, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent question. And I think it gets to the very, very heart of this webinar. Um, wow, yeah. Um, just like while we're letting some uh, attendees kind of like percolate on this and, and ask questions or, or want to have any clarifying questions, would I be able to ask a question, Sanjana? Yeah, sure. So I think what you've done in this excellent webinar that you pre uh, presented to us today is find this kind of mutual causal link for uh, folks on like the receiving end of gender-based and sexual violence, as well as the folks who are doing that violence, right? It's almost this like cyclical kind of like cycle where people who are perceiving or feeling those uh, like feelings of disenfranchisement or, or lack of power and are acting in, in ways to kind of gain that as well as shame are producing like outcomes in others that have those similar feelings, right? So you found this kind of like concept in this experience that is um, both like a result of gender-based violence as well as a um, almost cause, like one of the causes. Um, and I guess my question is, <laughs> um, is like, where, where should we start, right? Like a big kind of thing that, that we had at the end there was like ways in which we ourselves can like combat feelings of shame. Um, but like, should those, like, where should our kind of like direction be put towards? Who should we be going to in order to kind of combat these feelings of shame? Uh, so for combating feelings of shame, uh, I think so first you need to uh, understand, uh, to acknowledge yourself uh, that uh, it's okay to feel shame, it's okay to just go to other people, even if it can be your loved ones. Uh, and to combating shame, it's very, very uh, essential to recognize your own feelings. Um, and if you seek out the help uh, uh, to other professional, uh, it's, really, it's really essential regarding it because shame is one of the root cause also of anxiety. It's also triggers to depression too. So it can be one of the cause of gender-based violence as well as one of the cause of uh, mental health. Totally, right? Like yeah. um, shame is a symptom of a lot of other mental illnesses, right? Like anxiety, depression. And in that video, um, even talking about like feelings of paranoia where like yeah. uh, people like, like negative self-talk. There's so many things that are kind of wrapped up in uh, in shame that it's hard to kind of like parse out uh, the kind of original origin, right? It's almost a kind of, it's, uh, it's multifaceted in that way. Um, I'm looking at the chat and I will, yeah, I'll question. read it out loud. Yeah, thank you so much. My question is a two-part question, excellent. Oftentimes people are hesitant to reach out to their families and or friends with their uh, experiences of gender-based violence. Sometimes friends and families may want to support someone who is experiencing gender-based violence, but may not have the right words or supports to help the person. Are there culturally safe supports for people who cannot reach out to their families? And second, are there learning resources for friends and families to build their knowledge about how to combat shame? So I'll read that out for you one more time, Sanjana. Um, are there culturally safe supports for people who want to reach out to their families about experiencing shame? Um, uh, so uh, I don't know if I'm answering right to this question. I am sorry if I'm answering wrong or uh, too. You can uh, like you can correct me on that. But as per my knowledge, uh, there are very few cultural safe supports for people who cannot reach out to their families. Uh, just because we are very, very cultural stringent, I would like to say, uh, regarding it. Uh, and also, but there are many, many community supports where you can reach out uh, uh, people who, uh, uh, which like cannot reach out their own families. And, uh, and 
maybe they are not of uh, not all of the learning resource for friends and family but uh, shame is uh, one of the emo uh, one of the topic which I, i can talk about my own experience when i personally took it uh, because uh, i was really interested how to uh, combat things and all and i found a very very less resources regarding it uh so i think so people are doing their good people uh, many uh, people who are in helping proportion uh, profession who are building uh, building the, the resources regarding it and i think so my this uh, own webinar is one of the uh, resource which uh, helps uh, helps the people to combat shame i and person with feeling gender based violence is i know it's it's really difficult to understand uh, uh, to cope up or to reach out the resources but i think so um, every other individual uh, is bound to feel uh, that emotions uh, into their body and to seek out the professional support uh, to its like it's really essential uh, and we have our crisis line for it whenever like if you are feeling some sort of like violent uh, when you are experiencing gender based violence or any kind of sexual violence you can always contact us and we are out to help you wow what a what a great answer is jenna right and uh, i'm thinking if people are looking more into like uh diving into like uh, academic and, and professional definitions of shame maybe we can provide all those lovely references that you've uh, done to research this topic i can include it in the uh video log on facebook for people to access yeah of course yeah. awesome um what else yeah and i i oh <laughs> i i have so many questions that i want to ask but i want to make sure that i'm leaving space for people to uh also ask what they want to Yeah, yeah. I I see I see Sanjana, I think you might be uh sending messages only to the panelists but not the attendees. I think yeah. that's Yeah, no worries. <laughs> oh, I'm being joined by a cat. I'm sorry. Hi there. So, um I want to I wanted to go back to something that I think also helps in part kind of like answer that question as well near the end, right? Like you were talking about um one of the like oh pardon me one of the causes of feelings of shame to be having feelings of low self esteem or low self confidence right and it, it's so tough to kind of like parse out whether that's a cause or if it's a symptom of feelings of shame or if it's a the result of like uh, another mental illness that might be comorbid in a person right so i i do think that kind of um self esteem is this kind of like critical concept that if like you're able to build it in yourself um it's almost like a uh a resilience factor right like if you can kind of build this up maybe you're more resistant to feelings of shame or or that shame becoming toxic shame or trait shame right it's just yeah i i i think i think people have experiences uh with either like sexual or gender based violence that occurs to them and those ex experiences are very very hard to process a lot of the time they're overwhelming um and in some cases like they can be traumatic right and that's a difficult task in assessing that and processing that in and of itself um but it's just enlisting others to help you process that right when you when you can't feel like or when you're made to feel like you can't process that alone or made to feel like you can only tackle it alone it's it's tough <laughs> it's such a tough thing yeah and uh, i think so uh, recognizing your shame is like really important i have been stressing out this lot because uh, because this is the one way which you can uh, reach out to support even if uh, i know it's an overwhelming uh, like feeling but i think so it's um, it's you who uh, like who can help you yourself to get healed uh it's uh, i know it's really difficult uh, i know it's like really difficult to combat all these emotions but i think so you can start early so that you uh like you can conquer it early that's what i was like to say. yeah 
And something that you mentioned near the beginning of your webinar and also a little bit at the end are the ways in which people kind of like cope, cope with those difficult feelings that yeah. aren't able to be like processed fully, right? Um, and and um, it's, it's important to mention that like um, the, the ways in which people are able to cope are what's working for them at that time, right? But there are, um, I don't wanna say like better or worse ways in which we can cope. There's, there's ones that are better like in the long term for like your, your general health, but like ultimately if you're using a coping mechanism uh, to like help combat these feelings of shame in the moment, like you're doing that because you're surviving, right? Yeah. And I feel like that's a really like, important um, point to mention, right? That like when we're feel when we're feeling like we're unable to cope, um, and and oh goodness, and this and this wraps up with like stigma and discrimination, right? Yes. When certain forms of coping are are stigmatized or or even criminalized, right? Like that's not addressing the, the problem or the, addressing that root, which is like people are feeling these feelings and, and feel like they can't. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm just like linking back different portions of the webinar. And yes, uh, and many people go for like uh, alcohol or drugs that helps them, uh, that they think that helps them to cope up uh, the feelings of shame. But you need to understand even if uh, other people are also dealing, you should be non-judgmental to, to them and understand uh, each other is like a really ass essential. And this main thing is like listening to other people can help so many lives and can help so many things active listening to people is something which like i want everyone to do uh, to understand um, every uh, each and every person like even if you don't understand but just being there with the the person really really helps wow Thank you, Sanjana. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question uh, related to the research that you did for this webinar. Did you find that like there was like a most effective form of therapy um, or, or a kind of like counseling mode or modality that kind of like helped folks uh, with feelings regarding shame? Uh, so uh, um, I don't have uh, like the specific research to uh, tell to people, but uh, on the basis of the uh, research I have been going through dialectical behavioral therapy as well as the psychotherapy helps a lot because uh, uh, DVD the dialectical behavioral therapy does have a lot of um, uh, combating uh, strategies for fear to deal with feelings of shame uh, uh, like such as emotional regulation uh, to uh, breathing and uh, just um, uh, medita meditating having your own personal space and all everything that and psychotherapy uh, helps uh, for like the in the medication perspective when you go to a professional um, leaving uh, like if you go to a professional counselor a professional psychiatrist or professional psychologist they can help you with all your medication with proper prescribed medications i would like to yes and, and that makes a lot of sense just like what you're linking right like when you're feeling like uh these feelings and experiences are overwhelming uh directly kind of addressing that overwhelming feeling or having those feelings be overwhelming is a is an excellent start yeah. Um, I'm also wondering if, like, just along what you were saying earlier, if group therapy would be like a kind of uh, effective way to address shame, because not only talking to other people about um, your particular shame, but maybe also hearing other folks' uh, experiences with shame, um, maybe like, maybe a method uh, or, or kind of like entryway to understanding and um, addressing your own feelings of shame. If you're able to kind of address it and uh, respond to it in another, it might be translating uh, or a kind of way in which you can allow to process it yourself. Yeah. So anyways, that was something that I was thinking of. Yeah, um, uh, I would like to add up on that. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if everyone knows there is uh, always an AA group. 
alcoholic anonymous uh, that is what it's like uh, it's not quite similar to that but that is what like people do share their experiences and you acknowledge each other you understand each other and even you acknowledge you you know yourself you acknowledge yourself and also you don't feel that shame to let out because you know other people have dealt with same thing so that was group therapy uh, can be helpful too yeah yeah like not only knowing that there's other people to talk about but there's yeah. also other people who have going who are going through the same thing as you right yeah excellent stuff Sanjana. um uh, this is <laughs> i also want to open it up to uh the attendees who are here if you have any like questions or clarifications that you want to go over there was a lot of information um be sure to post it either in the q a portion or in the chat yeah i'm also looking at facebook um yeah so jana while people are uh, typing in questions was there was there like a topic uh, regarding regarding shame and gender-based violence that you didn't have the time to uh, include in this webinar, but maybe wanted to? So I think so I could include more of the th therapies or something uh, regarding it. Uh, as we talked about the group therapy and also DBT psychotherapy, I uh, did include. So maybe I required a bit of research on that. Maybe, and also uh, I would like to um, look uh, into how people have like uh, on a personal level uh, how people have dealt with it and how people are uh, continuously dealing with it right thank you so much Sanjana. i have a, another much. question from jocelyn in the chat thank you very much jocelyn jocelyn uh do you think self-compassion work would be helpful what do you think Sanjana? yes uh, I think so self-compassion does work, uh, like self-compassion work, because when you recognize yourself, uh, you can do great. I, I don't know if I'm answering this question right, Jocelyn. Uh, I am just putting a sort of words, whatever it's what I have like researched or uh, having being knowledge about it, or I apply it to my daily, uh, daily life. Uh, self-compassion work could be helpful. Uh, I don't know if it is a right example, but every day working for my placement, the self-compassion of understanding people to being helpful to people to by just listening to people helps me every day to wake up from my bed and just go for my placement, uh, which is like uh, for the self-compassion. Uh, but this is like my personal example. If we uh, link it to shame and gender-based violence, self-compassion does work because uh, when you recognize your own feelings and emotions it's it the your work gets uh, literally 50 percent easier uh, and you are able to find out what triggers you or like what makes you feel negative what can make you feel positive or what are the uh, coping strategies which are good for you mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered this question right um, or no. Lucas, you can add up on it. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that was an excellent answer. Um, I, 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 when I when I look at that question, I think back to your slide regarding distinguishing between guilt and shame. Yeah. And where with feelings of guilt, you're identifying the wrongdoing and harm of an action. But with shame, you're attributing that uh, act of harm or wrongdoing as something that makes you bad, <laughs> right? It's the idea of bad action or bad self, like you explained really, really well. Um, and maybe that like self-compassion to address shame addresses that kind of attribution that happens where it's because I've done this, I am a bad person, right? Going back to your example, maybe it could look like um, I'm bad at math or I failed a math test. And then that being linked with, I'm not smart or I'm not good with anything or, I'll never be able to do math and I'll never be able to achieve like I can already imagine like the ways in which like anxiety or, or feelings of like uh, associated with and, and symptoms of depression could kind of like create these like links in logic that happen uh, with those like negative self-talk. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a chain. It's a chain which like carry forward the always said in mental health when you get anxious, it comes with uh, depression, then it goes further. It's a chain it's a it's a chain when you which you carry forward it which you take it with you 
but uh, i think so self compassion helps to break that chain i can't like say that <laughs> yeah totally and i'm not too familiar with like um self compassion exercises or or uh um <laughs> like like what kind of like self compassion even may look like it may look like uh, like self affirmations probably right yeah. like um yeah yeah are you familiar with, are you familiar with that sanjay um i don't know if i'm saying this right but dbt theory uh, it's all on self compassion how you do your emotional regulation how you uh, address your emotions how you deal with it so for especially uh, when we talk about meditation uh, it helps you to heal it helps you to understand it help you to concentrate and everything and also you have an a uh, positive outlook perspective upon things uh, like that can uh, that can be one of the theory but also uh, cbt can be helpful cognitive behavioral therapy too totally thank you so much sanjana and thank you so much Jocelyn for that awesome yeah. question. Um I'll open it up once more. We can probably have enough time for one more question from uh some of the attendees that are here. Um if you have any qu clarifying questions that you want to go back to, uh we can go back into the presentation. But yeah, I'm opening the floor. I'm also checking on Facebook. definitely like a huge topic, right? Um, I really liked that video. <laughs> I think it was very good, yeah. <sighs> Wonderful. Uh, if we don't have any more questions, maybe we can start transitioning into uh, wrapping up this webinar. Um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just, I'll keep going, but if you have any last minute things, feel free, just fire them into the chat. Um, thank you so much for attending and coming here and registering for this webinar. We're so happy to have had you, and I'm very happy to have been a part of co-facilitating this webinar with Sanjana. Sanjana, this was absolutely excellent. Um, do you have any final words that you want to say to all the attendees that are here listening to you? Yeah, uh, my final words are just be uh, believe yourself and we are here to help you out. Don't feel ashamed of uh, asking help out. There are many, many people uh, um, uh, to help you out. Maybe it can be your loved ones. Maybe it, it can be your friends, peers and everyone, but we are out to help everyone and recognizing your own fears help will help you to be combating shame uh, and also uh, regarding gender based violence uh, it will uh, have an huge uh, like a perspective upon it like uh, understanding it uh, on a very uh, like i just had like uh, in a very mi mi micro level the impact of it it's uh, it's it's on a very macro level yeah awesome Thank you so much, Sanjana, and thank you all to those listening. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and take care. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Goodbye.